Glen Man, Dan Rooney. Now, the fight took place at exactly 10 minutes to 4 on Saturday, the 11th of August. This is not for the squeamish. It's rough, it's tough, but it happened. It's a virtual rerun of The Quiet Man. It is on now. The first jump there from Aidy McGinley. Dan goes into him. Yes, Dan's standing for no mess, no messing here. No big jump yet. He's opening his changes here. It looks rough. Two big men. Look at the face of Dan Rooney. What determination in Dan's face. We go there looking at each other. Yes. The blocking off each other's trumps very well. Here comes Dan here. Yes, this fight. Dan has him, I think. But as someone lifts their hand, they could be out for trouble. Yes, Dan is moving in here for the kill. This Dan's eye is open. If someone else raises a fist, they could be out for trouble. Amy McGinley is marked in the nose. Yes, no marks as yet from Dan. Yes. Yes, ex extreme tension here. Extreme tension here. There could be big trouble with this crowd yet. Any is badly marked around the face. Any is badly cut down on the nose. Yes. Dan is moving in. Yes. Dan hits me again in the, in the mouth with an uppercut. Yes. Dan is not marked. The stewards are trying to hold back this crowd. There could be trouble here yet. Hopefully not. Dan goes in. Dan misses with that one. Yes. Any starts to shout at Dan. Not a mark in Dan. Dan goes in. A trump to the jaw there. What will happen next, we don't know. What will happen next, we don't know. That actually happened in Cross McGlenn last month. Beside me, I have one of the contenders in that fight. That's Dan Rooney. And sitting beside Dan is the man whose voice you heard on the commentary. Paul Rooney. Dan and Paul. I'm just going to sit back a wee bit. <laughs> who, I hope not. Who actually won it? Because I know it ended in a bit of... I won, I won. You won? Definitely, yes. How long did the fight take? Um, but it from start to finish, about 15, maybe 20 minutes, you know. I have no idea really the right time. Why were you fighting? Well, it's just, it was a matchmake fight, you know. It was just for him, you know. He's supposed to be looking for me for a long time for fighting, you know what I mean? He's just a man that loves fighting. And, and he really, called on you? He called on me, yeah. To be king of the traveller? That's king it, of the yeah. Crew. He's just, you know what I mean, he's just he's that type of fella, you know. How much damage was done to you? Me, nothing really, just a black eye, that's it. I'll rephrase it, how much damage was done to him? Never seen him. He run. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wasn't seen no more. Before the fight, he was seen all the time, you know what I mean? He was there for two or three days before the fight. After the fight, he wasn't seen no more, you know. Never did see him. I never heard tell him before the fight as well, you know what I mean? First time I've ever seen him in my life. And you come over, you now live in Luton. I live in Luton, I come back for the, city, for the fight now. You come over and you went across the glen. And fought him. And you beat the... That's it, yeah. Well, he's... Okay. How much money did you make? And never, not a penny. Come on, Dad. Penny. No, no, nothing, no. You fought for pride? I just fought for... You know, he's that kind of a man, you know what I mean? He's just... He's a man that likes fighting, you know what I mean? He's a... You know. But have you fought before in, in a fight like this? Yeah, it's like the same thing again. Yeah, before, but nine years before this, you know, the same with another man again, you know. But a different man, you know, a nice, a nice man as well, you know, after the fight. I've never seen him before the fight, or never tell him, you know, but it was a match big fight again, you know, rumours, and then we fought. And then uh, never seen before this, before we did fight it, before never did see it. So we fought and... That was it. Never seen him ever since. Well, I've seen him a couple of times, but that's nine years ago. Never seen him ever since. Right. Is, this, is this a tradition among travelling people? Do you, do you have just, to fight? Do you? No, it's just it's a, a word of mouth. You know what I mean? People, you know, they say well, if they're in a pub or drinking, you know, I'll get such a fellow. Well, I'd fight him. You know what I mean? And then the rumour gets around. You know. But had you not come, what would have happened? It'd be a bad thing. You know what I mean? If I hadn't come there, it'd be bad. You know, very bad. I but he was on it all the time. You know what I mean? He's, a bit of a mouth, as you. Just it, yeah. <laughs> a very big mouth. <laughs> and you 
put your very big hand in his very big hand. Yeah, that's it. Well, if you see the tape, you know, you know what I mean? I've seen all the tape, I must admit. Yeah. It's rough, tough, by Jove, it's tough. Paul, you were the commentator on it. Yes. Tell me what happened. Did all these travelling people just descend upon Crossman Glen one day? Well, really, it's not the travelling people. Dan Willie was born and bred in Crossman Glen. He's a South Armagh man, and we're proud to claim him as one of our own. Dan is one of the most popular men we'll ever get. A very nice fellow. I'm proud to be sitting here beside him. But Dan's left Crossman Glen 20 years. Uh, Dan's spirit is still in South Armagh. It comes well, back for some time. Did you, sorry? Oh, yeah, we're back there. I lived there for two or three years. You know, the, the three years or whatever. Are you still travel? Are you still I'm one of the travelling people? No, 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 no. I live in Irish. You know, I mean, I'm not the travelling people. So, you know, but um, my father was, you know, my mother and all, they were travelling people, you know. Yeah. But, uh, Lord mercy, my father. But other than that, you know, we never, uh, I live in Irish all the time, you know. The connection, Jerry, is that the travelling people have never clung to the Queensbury rules, which, uh, as you know, the likes of Barry McWigan are fighting. Yeah. These fights, these street fights, these were, um, the type of fights before the Queensbury rules came in, the markers of Queensbury rules. But these introduced. fights, surely, Paul, are totally illegal. Well, uh, anything you enjoy, Jerry, is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Where were the police that day? Well, the police were there enjoying the fight. <laughs> <laughs> enjoying it. How much money? Give me a bit of the colour of, of the couple of days. Because the fight was on, then it was off, and then it was on again. Yeah. I take it there, were, there was large amounts of money been bet on, on either Dan or your man again. Well, as Dan said, Dan was fighting for pride. The pride of the people of South Armagh. Dan doesn't want fighting, but Dan will not shirk from it. Dan's a very brave man. But who was betting money? Who was betting the money? Well... Did you hear of any money changing hands? Well, there was a lot of money. How much? You could say nearly, in, I would estimate that there's about, I was talking to you a punter, there's about 300,000 pounds <laughs> changed hands across Midland. Are you serious? That is a fight. The travelling people are the people who have money. <laughs> well, that's only confirmed.